you have this dream of like, if I could just have that, then I'll be happy. I grew up in Japan doing two different martial arts systems. I won everything there was to win. International championships, national championships, world championships, the same tournaments that made Chuck Norris famous. I did Mortal Kombat the World Tour. I played Johnny Cage and Nightwolf and Baraka. I did the choreography and the stunts for the Ninja Turtles franchise. I got everything I asked for and it wasn't enough. I was drinking alcohol every single day. I could not drink alcohol. I was taking ecstasy every day. I was taking pills, Oxycontin, Percocets. I was taking cocaine. Whatever was there, I was doing it. I'm doing everything, and it's not hitting the spot. It's just destroying me. was leaving my wife and now my newborn son every day. I disappeared for, to Vegas for like four days. As soon as we get there, drop the ecstasy. I was doing drugs behind my friends' backs that they weren't doing. What would get a normal person high for 24 hours, I was taking like four and five tabs and it just basically was like a cup of coffee. It was like day three. My friends at this point were worn out. I was like, let's go. They're like, no, we're done. We're taking a break. I'm not done. And I had a, like a bottle of hard alcohol and a bunch of tabs of ecstasy, and I took them all. Ecstasy users know how you die with ecstasy. You overheat. When you see people OD on an ecstasy and they're just writhing around and just they can't stop moving and their skin is red and they're just gasping for air because they're just cooking themselves. Their body's just jacked up. It's like four in the morning. I'm completely high and out of it. I'm coming in and out of ecstasy and just confusion. And all of a sudden, I'm like alerted to my heart. And my heart is just going faster and faster and faster and faster. And I look down at my hands, my arms, and it's just blood red. Now I'm instantaneously aware. I'm overheating. Turn the bath on and I fill this bath up with cold water and dump the ice in there. And I get in it and I look down and my body's not getting better. It's getting worse. My heart's going crazy, my body's blood red, and I'm melted the ice. This bathtub now is like full of warm water. I'm dying, like I'm gonna give up now. And I had this moment in this stupor that I'm in where I just called out to God. I said, I know what I'm doing. You have every right to kill me, but please don't kill me yet. Just destroy my life. Get me out of this. It was honestly like a switch. It was done. I'm back. My heart it just goes right back to normal. My body, it feels like this cold rush comes over me and it's just like the heat is lifted off of me. And I'm sitting there now on this bed and my life is spared. I'd like to tell people, and then that's where my life changed. But I didn't understand the gospel and I didn't understand Christ and his lordship. I went back to using. And then one day at 6 a.m., I wake up and my car is being repossessed. And next thing you know, my electric shuts off and then my water shuts off and then my phone shuts off and I get an eviction notice on my door. Now I had this moment where I had just complete Silence. No more music. No more nothing but silence. It's me and God. And so I remember that I began to open the Bible. I'm reading Jesus call people to him and say, come and die. And I thought to myself, I never understood that. And I'm seeing Jesus say, repent. And I'm seeing the Bible talk about when a person turns to Christ, they're coming to, to have peace with God and to be forgiven. 
wait a minute, I thought you just pray this prayer and then you get to go to heaven one day and I'm seeing Jesus and the apostles talk about the gospel in terms of like it's bigger, it's better than that. It's not just a message about saying some words and then going to heaven one day. It's about you being reconciled to God today and being forgiven and knowing God and God changing you and transforming you and making you like Jesus all as a gift because of what Jesus did. And I'm seeing it and I'm just like overwhelmed with my guilt. God was nothing but good to me. And I have just spit in his face and rebelled against him with a high hand. There was no magic prayer. I didn't read a tract. I didn't recite some words. I just understood the good news that there was peace with God through what Jesus accomplished on the cross. And so I remember that I talked to God. I said, Lord, I am broken, I'm foul, I've got nothing to offer you, I'm not good. I can't satisfy your demands ever. Please save me, take over my life. Lord, I, I, I can't save myself, so please save me and please take over my life and rule me. And that's when my life started to change. That's it.